Hello everyone, today I'm going to teach you about the concept of the fat arrow function. What is it? Well, with the word function in its name, it's a function. Have a look, this is a normal function and how you would write it. It returns a sum of 1 and 2. And this is how you write an arrow function. See, while the normal function is minimum 3 lines, the fat arrow function is only a single line, quite incredible, and there's no return keyword because this fat arrow is that. And now, as you can see, we will show what gets returned from the normal function and from the arrow function. First, the 3 from the normal function, and then 3 from the arrow function. So these are the same, literally the same. All right, let's go next. Now, the same way you could use parameters in a normal function, you can in an arrow function. So we're using two global variables and then pass them into the function uh, to return their sum. Same way, 7, 7. They work the same, all right? The positive of the fat arrow function is that it returns a function object. A function object is something that version 2 requires some places, for example, set timer. Uh, it's very important for that, and also in uh, GUI buttons. So, the function object is something that you're gonna see in a documentation. And uh, the fat arrow function does exactly that. See, this expression not only does it return this, so everything that is right to the fat arrow, this whole expression returns a function object that you can call instead of the function itself. And usually in set timer you just omit the parentheses and here it is, the function object. But about that I'm gonna teach you a bit later because it's a whole subject. Uh, so here we're calling the normal function but here we're not calling the function itself the arrow function we're calling the function object of this arrow function and works exactly the same pretty cool isn't it well the thing is we don't even have to name it see this is what it was had a name it doesn't have to pretty finally there's no name yet it still works exactly the same why because we're calling the function object and the name of the function doesn't actually matter because it's binded to the function object this concept is called anonymous functions it's pretty cool and kind of goofy which i like <clears throat> now what did i want to oh right you can pass parameters into calling a function object the same way you would uh, pass them into the function itself. So here we're using it like straight up. Uh, and here we're passing parameters into the function object. Mm -hmm. What is this? Let's have a look. Oh yeah, so the same way we can um, remove the name, we can do this here as well. So the parentheses or brackets, which is easier to say, um, by themselves they look goofy and you might and you might ask, well, why is there a need for them? The brackets like make it obvious that yo, this is a function. And despite not having a name, it can still be passed with parameters. So as you can see, we'll have 7, 7, and uh, all the code here is commented, so this worked. Okay, uh, let's go next. Okay, usually when you write a function, you don't want to just get something returned, you actually want the function to do something. and. Uh, for the demonstration, I'll be showing message box, but this really applies to any function. 
and please remember that this is a version 2 tutorial uh, arrow function don't exist in version 1 alright so there's a normal function that uh, shows us a message box that says hi and uh, that's how you write it in an arrow function just as simple as returning something um, and you can see that well, it works great well how does it work isn't this like coming back uh, the function has a return the arrow function doesn't have that keyword why because this arrow means return it is return well how does it work well the thing is it doesn't just do this command it returns an evaluation of this expression in v2 pretty much everything is an expression except something that we'll talk about a bit later um, so functions and whatever they do is also an expression so it returns this expression that gets evaluated thing is when you evaluate a function you do that function and if it returns something it would also return that well since we're not uh, since message box doesn't return anything and we're not passing that into a variable that doesn't matter but if for example you string replace and replace something uh, this would still mean return it wouldn't just be done and that's it no you would get what's returned of it now usually you don't want a single command to be in a function that way you might as well just type it well I disagree personally but often you want multiple commands in a normal function you would just list them on multiple lines and since uh, this is the start of the line you can emit the brackets uh, okay thing is you can't do that in an arrow function why because this is not the start of the line so first you have to use brackets uh, for every command it's very important and since it's written on a single line you have to remember to use commas just like you would uh, here if you wrote everything on one line you would have to remember to use commas okay let's try running that oh no it doesn't work why because let's come back to return okay return what is it the return keyword returns a single expression this is a single expression and so is this but here this is not a single expression there are three of them so it tries to return a single expression but there are three of them and it doesn't know what to do so it throws an error what do we do with that well it's pretty simple kind of funny now it works I commented out the normal function because I showed you multiple times that these are supposed to be the same and they are uh, so yeah it showed one then two then three just like we expected what's the difference thing is everything inside of brackets is considered as if it's written on a single line first of all but we'll come to that a bit later but more importantly everything inside of brackets is a single expression that gets evaluated that goes for all of these brackets well um, so this is a single expression that contains three inside of it first it evaluates this one then this one and then this one and returns what comes of it in the end uh, by putting this in brackets we're making 3d expressions one single expression and it works just like this would all right now what does actually get returned for example we 
use a message box that shows us the number that comes out of uh, this function, this arrow function. We take six as the variable a, we pass it, uh, and what exactly gets returned? Okay, let's see. Uh, it was six, now it's seven, now it's 14, uh, divided by seven, it is two. We're expecting two, and we get two, because what gets returned is the last expression that returns something. So, instead of just uh, incrementing a by one and showing us seven, not caring about everything um, after that, it evaluates every expression and shows us what comes of it. So, the last one is the, the important one. Okay, so you see how we've been writing uh, arrow functions on a single line? Usually that's quite elegant, but if it was like this long on a single line, well, that would just be goofy. Thing is, you don't have to write it on a single line. Uh, here's the syntax for a normal function. Um, and here, it's on multiple lines. Now that's weird. Is this still a single expression? Yes, because we used brackets. And the AutoHotKey compiler does not care uh, how many spaces or enters or whatever uh, is inside of brackets because it considers all of this as if it's on a single line. So, well, let's just check. Yes, it works. But you don't have to limit yourself. Let's do this. Wow, it still works. Uh, let's indent it. Still works. Uh, and, uh, I don't know, let's, like, here. Still works. See, like, what is this? Is this really a single expression? Is this really a single line? For the compiler, it might as well be. So you can make it pretty as much as you want. You can write it any way you want, but the most important thing that, if you don't remember, can cause you errors is the comma. You have to write it as if it's written on a single line. If you forget the comma, it might not be of issue, but it might give you an error. It really depends, like for example here, it will work just as fine. Honestly, I am not sure why. It's not supposed to, but it can. But if you just use commas all the time, you will avoid all of the errors and it's going to be fine. And as I said before, uh, everything that is in brackets, these, these, or these, is considered as if it's on a single line, even if it really isn't. So for example, you write an array, you don't have to put everything on a single line, you can um, like make him look th like this multiple lines. That's very much something that you, you can do. There are restrictions though in narrow functions. It's that it returns a single expression. Well, even though v2 is mostly expressions, it's not all expressions. For example, this for in loop. The keywords of for and in are not expressions. They are keywords command syntax, you could say. So, unsurprisingly, this won't work. Because this is not an expression. So stuff like for, in, if, else, loop, while, so on, so on, will not work because those aren't expressions, nor functions. They can't work. The simple rule to decide if something will work in the arrow function or not is, can you write it on a single line. If you can, you can try. If you cannot, then you probably can't use it in an error function. Pretty simple. And uh, if you understand the, uh, the idea of expression, well, yeah, 
If it's an expression, it can be in an error function. If it is not, it can't be, unfortunately. Uh, so this is the only downfall. Now you might ask, well, why would I even need arrow function without an if else? Thing is, there's not only if else for checking if and else. We're used to using if this, then this, uh, then else, blah blah blah. But there's actually the ternary operator, which basically goes like if this do this, else do that. At first it seems confusing, and then it's even more confusing when you try to do else if. So because of that, I'll record a tutorial about the ternary operator, I'll explain it. But basically, this is the way to use if else in an expression. Okay, I think that's all. Yeah, it is. So, thank you for your time, and goodbye. You can um, check me out on social media, you can DM me on Discord, or leave a comment if you have any questions, I'll try my best to help you. Oh, and I almost forgot, all of the code that I showed today in this lesson will be linked in the description, so you can just go ahead and check it out. I'll try to comment some stuff so it's more easily understandable without the need to rewatch the video. So you can just go ahead and uh, use the code to experiment a bit more because I might have not talked about some more specific situations. Now, finally, goodbye.